the regular dinner scene at Setedema, a co-housing community 45 minutes outside Denmark's capital of Copenhagen. Stieg Brink, an architect, and his wife, an artist, and the teenage daughters they've raised here are responsible for tonight's meal, for themselves and 20 neighbors in the common house. We eat together four times a week for those who, who want to participate. What's it like cooking for 25 people? How do you do that? First of all, we have a kitchen that's mm -hmm. capable for it. So we have the tools to do it. And that's very important. Communal meals are a staple at Setedema, where 71 people live in 28 houses, clustered around shared recreational and outdoor spaces, walkways, gardens, and parking, and a common house. Residents are expected to clean shared areas and take turns tending the grounds. Everyone shares resources like laundry facilities, outdoor tools, and play equipment. Small groups of families rotate leading monthly community meetings. You live in kind of a small, small village. You know everybody around you, and you share as much as possible. So you are a very close neighbor, and you are kind of depending on each other, but you are not um, obligated to any um, strict rules. The Setedema community is made up of a range of singles, couples, retirees, and families with children. Every family has privacy in a home with its own bedrooms, baths, and kitchen. The land is cooperatively owned, but residents own their homes, a structure similar to a condominium association in the U.S. The cost of homes here is comparable to other homes in the area, but an average-sized household pays about $3,500 a year for communal resources. Set to Dema started 46 years ago and is recognized as the first co-housing community in the world. Britta Bira and her husband Arna were among the first families to move in. We didn't want our family to spend our lives in an insular way, in a house on a suburban street somewhere. And one day we saw a newspaper ad saying that some people had their eyes on a plot of land and they were looking for 25 to 30 families to buy it and build houses as well as a communal house. You share and there's a lot more efficiency. Lisa Berkman, a professor of public policy and epidemiology at Harvard University, says that co-housing harkens back to the kinds of communities that used to naturally dominate our societies. You know, when you think about the apartment buildings that were designed at the turn of the century, they were designed as two-family houses um, or three-family houses, you know, each on a floor. And those enabled um, multi-generation households to live together and still have their own housing. Berkman says that co-housing can reduce social isolation and the detrimental health effects associated with it. Social isolation relates to the number of ties and the quality of relationships that you have. Religious ties, community ties, work ties. People who are very isolated, who are disconnected, have a mortality rate that's about three times as high. That is, they're about three times as likely to die over maybe a decade as people who have many, many more um, ties. 70-year-old Jutta Hella has lived in Setedema for 30 years. It's important to me to be with a mixed group, not just with other older people, because then we would just talk about our diseases and aches and pains. Older people can't give the same energy as younger people can. So having um, neighbors and knowing their kids, I think that's just like it's a benefit of having a big family. Is this replacing the idea of the extended family? Indeed it is. Mm. So, so I, I see it very much as the extended family. It's like nice to have a friend nearby mm -hmm. always yeah. that you can talk to. 14-year-old Ella Polson has lived in Setedema her whole life. It's kind of like everyone's a parent and everybody will uh, take care of the kid if there's something wrong and uh, if the parents aren't there and uh, I think it's just very safe. It's estimated that at least one percent of the Danish population lives in co-housing arrangements. In the United States, the Co-Housing Association of America estimates there are about 150 communities. Rocky Hill Co-Housing in Northampton, Massachusetts was established 12 years ago. It has 28 households with residents ranging from age 2 to 80. With a similar financial model to Setedema, Rocky Hill has a variety of common spaces, resources, activities, and shared chores. I love knowing that uh, somebody's out there plowing the path, you know, on a snowy morning, 
that's lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing that there are, are mixed ages of people who can help with keeping the place up and we have our jobs divided. Carol Reinhardt is 72 years old and just retired from her job as a hospice coordinator. She's lived at Rocky Hill since its formation. You don't get up some day in the morning and say, you know, I think this is the day I'm going to have a community. You know, you build a community. The number of Americans 65 and older is expected to nearly double by 2050. According to the Pew Research Center, 61% say they would prefer to stay in their homes even when they can no longer take care of themselves. That's compared to 17% who would opt for an assisted living facility. Just 8% would prefer to move in with a family member. So this is kind of interesting. Hmm. Harvard professor Lisa Berkman says co-housing allows people to age in their homes. And with the aging of the population um, and the increasing frailty that people will experience as they age, at some point everybody needs a little help. Americans are particularly vulnerable to social isolation, in part because we value independence um, so much and because we're so um, mobile and we live in a very, very big country. Berkman says that while older Americans are especially vulnerable to social isolation, young families often struggle to maintain social networks as they juggle work and family. College professor Gary Felder lives at the Rocky Hill co-housing community with his wife and their two young children. He says their social life is built in, unlike other families who don't live in a co-housing arrangement. So you gotta arrange babysitting and you gotta figure out the timing and then you gotta rush back and so on. And that was just never a big deal for us. We would put our kids down, we would throw in a baby monitor, and we would go spend an evening with our friends. Because Every you're week. right next door to the yeah, house. Yeah, absolutely. And if one of our kids woke up, two minutes later we were in the bedroom. Felder admits that this lifestyle isn't for everyone, and about one family a year decides to leave. The biggest challenge is that you're making decisions with um, 27 other households. That is the definition of hell for some people. <laughs> but Felder says that for his family, the benefits they get from an intergenerational community outweigh the difficulties. The other thing which our kids get, which is even more rare in this society, is they have regular interactions with elders, with seniors. Um, they're very aware of the whole process of people getting older and retiring and having physical problems and dying. Rocky Hill residents are coming up with new guidelines to help aging community members, including ride sharing and connecting residents with financial and medical services. Could we even uh, make a space here in the common house for somebody who lives and is a licensed practical nurse and taking care of several different families who may be in that area of need? At the Setsudema community in Denmark, maintaining an intergenerational community is getting harder. More than half of the residents are now over 65. The community is encouraging younger families to move in when homes become available. Many longtime residents like Jutta Hella don't want to leave their social support network. We've been a part of creating this and want to feel the benefits that come with getting old in a co-housing community like this. Do you think that there's something about this community? Does it keep you younger? Yeah. Yes, definitely. I'm convinced that if I lived with elderly people exclusively, I would degenerate. So the fact that I'm living with younger people is a gift on a daily basis.